getting to names that I remembered. I started reading the story of Moses, the story of David, the story of Jesus, the story of Harun, of Abraham. And what I realized that these stories were different than any story I've ever seen in the Bible. These taught that these people were at the highest echelon of the society. They were at the highest peak of morality. They were the people to be followed. They were the guiding example. Not only did they command the people to do good, they were the living example of it. And this to me was what made sense. This was what I was looking for. This was the people that I could follow. These were prophets. This was what I... He said in here, guys, first peace of Christ to all of you. He said in here very, very important things. And by the way, you touched my heart about the morality. Those are the prophets in the Quran. The stories in the Quran, they are not the same as the Bible. This is what touched his heart. Because those prophets, they are giving a good example, which means in the Bible they are not. You know, first of all, prophets of God, they are no better than anyone. This is what Christianity believes. But in here, I want to investigate with you guys to see, do really the prophets of Allah, or the same prophets which exist in the Bible, which they are named in the Quran, do they give a good example for us to follow? Let us see. He mentioned something very important, and we would like to follow with him. All the names of the prophets he found there, they are wonderful. By the way, in all the Quran, you will not see one of the prophets, it's mentioned in the Quran, have good morality except one name. You know, that name is Jesus Christ. Anyone else is garbage. And we can prove that, including, including Muhammad. And you know what? We don't like to give speeches. We give proofs. Let us go and see. This is chapter 33, verse number 37. The Prophet of Islam, who made, he made the Quran, you will see always the Quran made to justify his needs, his sexual needs specifically, and his money needs. You will see in here, the verse saying it clearly, that's Muhammad, he was saying to his own, his own adopted son, his own adopted son, listen to, listen to this, what he said. His adopted son, refrain your wife for yourself and fear God before divorcing her. This is what he said to his own who adopted son. At the same time, what the verse saying, but you had hiding in your heart what God was to disclose. He was manifest of your love to her. Huh? He was saying to his son, keep your wife, son, don't divorce her. In the same time, the verse itself saying that, not me. You hide what is in your heart as love to this woman. Look how filthy he is. We just heard the gentleman, he is telling us about the morality of Islam, the prophet morality. This is what is seducing him to Islam. This is what made him convert. Is that morality? A man he claimed to be prophet. He is in love with women she is married, and she is his own son, wife. This is not the wife of the neighbor. Christ, he said, if you wish to have a woman she is not yours, you committed adultery. You are a sinner, and you need to repent. And here we see the opposite, guys. We see Muhammad, he is in love with women she is married, and God himself, he is, you know, he's saying to him, why you are hiding it? God himself, instead of saying to him, shame on you to be in love with married women. You will see story in the Bible about a prophet of God getting a woman, she is not his woman, and how God, he punished him. So the God of the Bible is punishing his prophet for his sin. The prophet of the Quran, Muhammad himself, God of Islam himself supporting him for his love for a married woman and you are telling me morality if a man he come to your house and he have loved your wife he have a sexual desire to your wife actually if you go to Ibn Kathir you will see the following just to show you how this man is using religion for his own sexual need 
when this woman she is divorced from his own son he came to her and he did marry her they call it marriage this is what the Muslims say he didn't marry her but how he did marry her the woman she asked him prophet where is your witnesses this is Ibn Kathir I'm, I'm showing you in the front of my eyes Ibn Kathir it's not me saying that she said to him where is your witnesses and by the way if you go to the English translation of Ibn Kathir you will see all of this is missing I don't know why simply because they are liars they are trying to hide the truth otherwise if you are translating the book why you don't put everything if you go to Ibn Kathir you will see the page one verse this is one verse explanation look how long look how long it is in the translation of Ibn Kathir it's not even a few lines what happened they eat the words to hide the shame of Islam and look what happened here the woman she told him prophet don't we need witnesses in Islam guys no man can marry a woman without witnesses no witnesses this is adultery simple clear you can ask any Muslim just to show you that this guy he created a rule just for those dummies Muslims it's not for him he don't follow it he told his men you can marry only four but he married as, as much as he want he told them you cannot have sex with your wife if she have period but he used to have sex with his wives when she have period you can go and read the hadith at the same time in here look in here when he came to her wanted to sleep with her she said don't we have to get married first where is the witnesses he said listen to this my grandfather and your grandfather is one cool wa inni ankahniki allah and allah made me marry you from the sky and the ambassador jibril both did make me marry you huh what is the marriage the woman she is asking him before he have sex with her where is the witnesses in Islam there is no marriage without witnesses he said oh uh, Allah and uh, Jibreel my witnesses well I can go and have sex with any woman and if somebody asks me she is your wife I will say yeah because what is your witness I will say oh Jibreel and and uh, uh, Allah and how come this is a way to prove a marriage it's only goes for Muhammad and what your grandfather and my grand uh, grandfather have to do with this my grandfather and your grandfather is one and my God Allah he made me marry you from the sky and his ambassador Jibreel huh? so he made chapters in the Quran just to justify his sexual desire for this women and this is why he forbid adoption from that day adoption became forbidden in Islam and you know what some Muslims will say to you oh you know what uh, he did that to prove to us that uh, we should not uh, adopt and in here you ask yourself a very easy question adopting a son is not yours not from your blood not because you have sex with a woman is it something noble or not isn't it yes it is why he forbid it then which one is better to have a son is not my son taking care of him giving him money giving him support giving him love or leaving him in the street or oh, the Muslims know you know you can put him in a home of uh, uh, orphan you know this is not the same there's a huge difference which one you prefer to be an adopted son or an orphan house this is showing you how evil he is because adoption is very merciful of this is the best of a human being he can do and not only that if you are adopted by a human being by someone who when he die you will take his house you will inherit his money you will inherit his last name because when you are born you don't have a last name even because you are adopted if you are not adopted you don't have a last name most of those who they are adopted before and even now it is people who have no family they don't know who is their parents in the Middle East this is very very hard a problem because if you don't have family nobody in the future will let you even marry his son or even to marry his daughter 
because you don't have a last name and it's mean you are a son of adultery and everybody will stone you everybody will make fun of you everybody will make give you a call if, uh, you know give you uh, call you names but when you adopt somebody you are being so merciful and so nice of you to have a mission to give a child he is not yours Muhammad he forbid adoption just because he have a sexual desire for a woman and you see this man is giving us a lecture about morality we will continue with the coming videos about more morality like the prophet Salmon who and more sense because he did talk about sense Islam makes sense the prophet Salmon who was given a flying carpet to go and fly all the way to Yemen just to see a woman who she is showing her legs because she have her sexy legs because she have sexy legs as you see he was given a flying carpet and because she have sexy legs Allah or sorry 